Hey everybody. Um, so I thought I'd do a video on uh, hair, um, since this is something that I know a lot of people ask me about. There's a couple of other videos on my page here that, that talk about hair, but I think this one maybe I can spend a little bit more time on the rendering. Um, also the last video that I did, the proportions video on the rock, uh, of course he had no hair, so I thought it would be a good time to sort of address that a little bit. Um, so for this tutorial, I'm working on Strathmore Tone Tan Paper. I've already blocked in this drawing of Lucy Hale. I thought this would be a nice one to, to work on because she's got lots of sort of flowing hair. Um, primarily, I'll use a couple different um, tools, but I'm gonna, I'll tell you about them as I go. Um, but the ones that I'm going to use um, the most of are uh, a woodless pencil. You could use a regular, um, you know, wooded pencil, but obviously the... Um, graphite in in a regular pencil um, is quite thin whereas the graphite in a woodless pencil is quite solid which is why I like them um, my favorites are the generals um, people always ask me about brands of pencils I really don't have a huge preference except when it comes to 8b um, the, the generals woodless 8b seems to be darker than just about anything else on the market that I found um, there's certainly um, some pencils like uh, Stadler uh, Lumograph black that are that are quite um, dark but the, <clears throat> they also tend to be a little different they've got higher carbon content and things like that whereas the the generals 8b um, seems to be just a standard pencil as far as graphite consistency but really dark so so that's the one I'm going to use um, a lot of times you'll see me using these guys this is a pencil extender um, this is another um, one of the same pencil but I'm just holding it in that so it's a it's a holder um, but these are basically the same I just happen to have one that's that's in a piece and one that's full uh, the other thing I'm going to use is a tor tortillon or tortillion however you want to pronounce it um, it's basically a big stump of paper um, you can see this one's quite dirty um, I'll just put it up here it already has um, graphite in it because I use it over and over and over again that actually is really helpful because it makes um, it makes the uh, the blacks really black because you're blending not only the the graphite that you've laid down but also the stuff that's already in the the tortillion. Um, I do I think I've mentioned it in other videos, but I do keep one that's all white um, for when I use Conte and things like that. So you know they're cheap. Um, I have other ones that are that are small. This one's also um, got a lot of black in it. This one's actually got some pastel I was using it for. So I got tons of these things. Um, and then the other thing that you're going to need for um, for drawing hair this way is an eraser. Um, I'll, I'm not sure exactly which ones I'm going to use. Uh, definitely this guy. Uh, this is a just a paper mate tough stuff. I think they sell them at stationery stores, certainly at art stores. They're cheap. Um, it, it clicks forward. Um, Tombow, I believe, fairly recently actually came out with these guys. It's a mono zero it's called so it's the same thing as the as the paper made it's just a very fine um tip and then i've got an electric eraser um as a derwent um i do actually have um a plug-in electric eraser too um it works great it takes up lots of material um but most of the time i find out i don't actually need it so i've got it down there but i don't use it a lot um obviously a kneaded eraser is one of those um tools that I would recommend they do gum up fairly quickly so I don't know if, because I haven't done the demo yet I don't know exactly which ones I'm going to use but those are the ones that I'd be prone to using um, and one thing I can't remember if I've told you or if I have then maybe you missed it um, I like to keep uh, sandpaper you can get these at art stores this one was $1.20 so obviously they're cheap um, but you could just use regular sandpaper from a hardware store too when the pit when the um, eraser gets really gummed up just clean it off on there so it's it's kind of a nice tool to have as you're going um, I have other erasers too um, these guys are the same I just find these are a little bit thick for what we're going to be doing um, okay so the process is actually very simple hair is really one of the easiest parts of the portrait even though a lot of people find it difficult and, and a lot of people find it challenging um, it's easy because you don't have to be super accurate with it. 
Um, I'm just going to start over here. Obviously, I blocked it in, and if, if you haven't seen my video on blocking in, um, please have a look. It's the one that I did on the rock. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that I'm basically taking um, the graphite strokes in the same direction as the hair. Now, this is not uber important at this stage because I am going to blend them. Um, but it's still helpful for a couple of reasons. First of all, it helps me to, I, I spent time to define the hair and now I'm going to be able to go back. I, you know, if I just, if I just take the side and block really hard, I lose all of that. Whereas if I go nice and, um, sort of in, in the, uh, the same direction and the same sort of organic feel as the hair, um, then... I can I can keep those lines right I can make it a little darker in places and I know it's always hard to tell in a video but I am varying my um, I am varying my pressure okay. um, you don't have to be too too careful at this stage um, hair tutorials are hard for me because a lot of times I like to take the pad and flip it on its side or flip it upside down or put it in my lap even which you know is kind of difficult to to show on uh, on camera but hopefully I can um, get through this in the normal way here um, the reason I do that is just easier for me to you know rather than getting in certain places I, I find it easier um, but I'm pretty sure I can manage this one little bit here for you guys Okay, so all we've got at this point is kind of a big block, right? I mean, it's it's dark, and I'm just going to do a little bit more. Um, it's dark, and I guess it kind of looks like hair, but there's not much to it. And part of the thing is that you can... I don't know if, how well you can see in the video, but things are kind of modeled in here. They're not really... They don't look like hair, right? There's no, um, there's no definition of the hair. I'm going to make this a bit darker. I am pressing harder here because this is... There's the fold of hair that goes over... And this part is in shadow, so it's going to be really dark. Right. So you can see, like, uh, what I want to show more than anything here is you can see I'm not really too, too focused on anything at this stage. Even these are going the wrong way. Um, just because they're they're going to be on, there's going to be less detail on them, right? So so this part of drawing hair is is really there's not that much you have to worry too much about the details. Okay, so now we take out the tortillion, like I said before, and this one I've got one side look a little darker than the other. It doesn't really matter. They're both going to be effective, and I start by just taking those edges um, because I want them to. Well, I'll explain it as I get to them. Um, but now I'm going to go to the side here. And you can probably see it's starting to get pretty dark already. Over here where I've got it really dark, it's going to it's gonna really be like jet black. Okay, now you want to be careful of these edges, obviously, because you want to retain some of them. Over here, she's going to be in shadow. Right, the hair is throwing shadow, so I don't mind if this edge becomes very sort of soft. But right here, this is the edge of her face, which is really kind of one of the most important things, right? The the shape of your face is part of what defines you. So I want to make sure that this edge is really sharp, and I've kind of gone a little bit soft in there. Come back and just make that nice and clean. Um, and sometimes I might, in this case, in the really fine areas come in with a smaller tortillion um, just because it's easier for me to kind of get nice and close and keep that edge nice and sharp. I'm going to go back in with a bit more white charcoal here just to just to sharpen up that edge. Okay. And then Just sort of blurring these out, smoothing them in, and making them dark. Okay. Now, in this case, um, her hair takes up a lot of the page, so I, I don't think I'm going to bother with a um, with a background. If I was going to do something like a, a white contour or something, 
I would certainly have laid that in before I get into the finished areas. Okay, now, this is really the, the key part, and this is the part that I think a lot of people miss. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to draw with our eraser, okay? So, uh, actually, sorry. <laughs> I just realized I hadn't done the top part. I want to do that first. Um, and this part, in fact, is kind of ugly, so I'll go back in and just to clean that up a little bit. Okay, so we're just going to do that. And, you know, if you want to, you can certainly um, sort of throw some graphite even over or some of this with the tortillion, even though we haven't done that part. Just puts down sort of an initial layer. I'm going to erase a couple of the, um, the guidelines that I had in there originally. Okay, so now we've got a pretty clean slate, right? It's all... It's all been blended together. There's not a lot of definition going on, and that's where this is really the key, right? Uh, my hand is getting dirty, and I'm putting it over the page. So you may want to put... Um, I just have a scrap of paper that I put over things. You may want to do that as you're going. Um, I probably would have done the hair earlier, whatever, but you can always correct it, right? That's the nice thing about using a good paper, is you can go back and correct it. So what you want to do is very try to stay organic and what I mean by that is look at how your hair in your model or your reference falls and try to mimic it okay and that means you can probably see but um, it means varying the thickness the weight um, the definition of these of these strokes of the eraser so and I mean I've said it before what I'm really doing is drawing with the eraser Okay. And as you pull these out um, again, this gets dirty, so if you if you feel like you need it cleaner, you can go back in and just erase it with your with your um, sandpaper, um, or you know you can keep going. What happens is it gums up, right? You're basically pulling the graphite with the eraser. But the key at this point is really to, sort of to identify the shapes that you're seeing in the hair okay um and you may you may see little bits here and there okay um and you may want to vary it right so that's why it's nice to have the little guy like this mono by tombow um because it's a it's a smaller um eraser line Okay, and then once you've done that, you have the ability, if you want to, to go back in with um, either a graphite. This is, uh, you can't see it on here because it's all worn out, which makes me believe it is a, yeah, it's a General's layout pencil. They're just nice black um, pencils, probably about a 4B if you're just using any other brand. Okay, so you can go in and now you're kind of laying in those individual strands of hair, really. Okay, and, and we can do, we can actually do that here, right? Lay in actual individual strands of hair. And I'm going to just put in a bit of shadow here because I know that she's in shadow. Okay. Um, and then I'm not going to do the whole hair thing um, just because I know I'm going to need to flip it around. But I want to... Before I go, I want to just, uh, we're about 15 minutes now, I want to just um, touch on one other thing, and that is the flyaways. Flyaways are sort of the random hairs that are all over the place when you have long hair. Um, they are 
neat to draw they're fun to draw and they're also one of the most um descriptive sort of add-ons that you can do to hair but you have to be careful about how you add them and the hairs themselves have to vary okay don't just go in heavy-handed or else they will look heavy-handed you see so what you want to do is you want you want to um, mimic the hairs and when you look at your reference you can see um, what the hairs look like um, and you want to um, have them I don't know how well you can see but I have hairs that are they start heavy and they they finish off very lightly okay, that's kind of an important um, part of it because otherwise it just looks like you've added on um, lines around the edge whereas if you can really vary Sorry, pencil sharpener. So in this stage, you really want to keep your, your lead very sharp. Um, see if you can see this one goes dark and light and comes out again. Right? Um, all right. So hopefully that uh, kind of gives you a sense. You know, I keep working on this and finish off the rest. Um, I might, as I go... Uh, pick out individual hairs where I would add a little bit of white. Her hair is pretty dark and there's not a lot of contrast in it. Um, but I will certainly add a little bit here and there. Okay. Um, so, and you can see on here, graphite, uh, or sorry, white charcoal doesn't go great over graphite. But anywhere where I've actually erased it, 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 it holds really nicely. So... You have to be careful. You don't want to add too much um, uh, white because it'll it'll end up being very harsh. But just a little bit here and there. Okay, so there you go. So uh, yeah, I'll keep on working on this, and uh, hopefully it was useful for you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments, and um, yeah, we'll see you next time.